Okay, hello and welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos. This one is a subscribers update. Uh, basically, we're just going to put in some things that we aren't going to show on tutorials. If you've been following us, watching our videos, you'll know that we've been spraying certain axles and suspension components. Um, what I'd like to report is the paint is actually a very good quality. It lays on thick and the after results of it is, is exactly what we're expecting. It does help, of course, to have good equipment. Now, I did lash out by DeVille Bliss, but the paints supplied by Arkwright Paint, and obviously you should be able to recognize the tins by now. Recently, we had a few nasty comments from people on Facebook accusing us of just grabbing freebies so we can get on and do our project. Well, that is far from the truth because this actually costs us more money than the freebies that we get. We do check companies out and we try them out before we really start to push anything. And the reason I'm showing Arkwright is because they're actually a pretty good, but they also offer support and advice, which is really important for guys like ourselves that don't know everything and it helps with the tutorials and of course the people who are accusing us of uh, getting freebies they're also watching these videos so who exactly is getting stuff for free here anyway this little bit of a rant is over so getting back to the plot basically we have a modern tea wash which some of you might know as a etch uh, wash for galvanized bumpers and galvanized chassis this is what we will do first of all before we uh, do any etch priming uh, basically this stuff etches the galvanized so we can get a good chemical fix to the metal now this stuff is actually quite nasty it uh, the fumes are pretty bad it's phosphoric acid so you can see what i'm wearing a mask a goggles and some uh, chemical resistant gloves to paint the galvanized now i just did this quickly to see what sort of condition this is in and how it come out and basically it goes on as a clear solution after a while it will eat into the galvanized turn it black however if there's any tape which i think this is which i didn't see when i cleaned the bumper before washing it and bits of paint it will not etch so uh, this is another job i'll have to do um let's clean it off and then just etch it a little bit more what we're finding is that the weather now is getting colder so we're going to have to hurry up and get some more painting done before we carry on with something else what is impressive is Arkwright is like paddocks. It's a one-stop shop for many different things, not just paints and uh, military camo paints, but it's also industrial welding. Now, Arc, MMA, and TIG welding, MIG welding, plasma cutting, etc., you can find on their site. Now, this is a one-stop shop for guys who are really getting into the engineering side of their Land Rover. We're looking at this welder here, which is a TIG ACDC, and it also has MMA, which is a manual metal arc welding facilities, which is this. Now, Power Weld and Arkwright Welding have helped us out here. They've sent us a demo model, which we can use in tutorials to show you how to weld. And this is what we're going to do. This is a beautiful bit of equipment. It has a pulse. It's AC-DC. And of course, with the TIG and the MIG, this will sustain, is sustainable for DIY and for maintenance purposes. We've got the, the TIG Lance here and of course we're going to have to go and get the gas for this uh, shortly and as you can see it's all a power weld stuff which they are a pretty good company the machine itself is fairly lightweight now this is a modern compared to the other welders we've had before so we're going to have to, I'm going to have to get my head around this and then we'll start doing tutorials Basically, this has the facility for manual metal arc, which uh, for some of you that don't know is actually stick welding. Uh, great potential there. And of course, we have maintenance stuff that we need to make up for our Land Rovers. This one here is for the LT230, so you can sling it properly when you're removing it or putting it into your vehicle. We'll have to make one of these up once we've got through the basics, of course. And then later on, well, I've got a gas regulator here. I'll have to get some uh, tungsten gas so we can rig this up once I put a plug on it as well so we can also learn some TIG welding. This should be interesting. 
of course the machine we have is pricey however the MMA inverter with a lift TIG is possible a combination machine for the DIY specialists and Arkwright of course have a massive selection of machines so have a browse and have a look first but don't go out and buy one just yet Okay, when we uh, showed removing bushes, I actually left this panard rod out because, as you see, I've not actually painted it yet. I want to show you something else about pushing bushes out. Now, we have a small bush here, which is a bit of a bitch to remove. If, for instance, you used a, a piece of metal or a socket and you push just the rubber part, you'll find that it won't go through. Use a smaller socket or anything that's going to push the center out first. Now, this one was fairly easy. We're pushing the center out, leaving the rubber in place. And this is a socket and extension here that I'm using. It is um, tools I don't use, basically, so I can be happy if they crack. It doesn't make any difference. Don't use your best sockets and extension bars for this. Well, this tip here is to make life just a little bit easier for you. Once you've taken the centre out, you can then use that larger socket to ream out the rubber. Now, I'll show you this. It's basically just fitting it and pushing it through. Don't get a socket that is too big and jams up on the metal. Like this one here I got so far, okay, and I got the rubber out, which you'll see, but also the socket got stuck. This mainly was due to corrosion, but look, you can see the rubber's been paired out easily. No problem. Now what I had to do was, uh, I can't knock that out, so I've taken the extension out, turned it the other way, and then pushed the socket out. That's not really a problem, but just be aware of this. Just like that, you see that? Easy. And what you'll find is that the rubber has been paired and you have the metal that you can then cut out. Okay, I couldn't actually go any further with this tutorial. I'll show you why in a minute. But the um, difference between metal elastic bushes, here you have uh, sleeves and you have an outer sleeve, okay? Now the rubber in the center is not much, but when the arm or this ponard rod moves, it only flexes the rubber and everything else stays static. Whereas a poly bush, and I know some people don't like them because I don't, there's a lot of material here and it actually will move in the arm and wear out the body of it, the arm, which I don't like. And also it has a lot of material to flex. I've had trouble with these, so I don't use them. I fit metal elastic ones in the panard rod. Okay, the reason why I can carry on with this tutorial is my voice actually cracked on me while I was working on this. And you can see the crack here, very prominent. That went with a great big bang. Poor old voice has um, done a lot of service, however I had to rush out this Sunday and find myself another one which was cheap. I'm not sure this is going to last very long, however it does have an area here for um, using a hammer on it, so we'll see how well this works. This is made by Clark, and uh, if you know who they are, then uh, I can't say whether it's any quality or not, but it's a rotational one, and I think it's actually made of uh, bits out of the World Trade Center. Okay, so this tool here, um, I'm sorry, somebody did send it to me and I just lost his email. You'll have to keep an eye out for it. But basically what it is, is something that will help you greatly when you're doing your drop arm a ball joint, okay? It helps you get the circlet in if you know it's easy enough to get out and you can then remove your components and put them back in. But the plate itself, okay, it has a spring underneath it and you need to push it up with something like a G-cramp um, to make sure that you can get the clip on. Now there's a spring. We've seen this tool before, I've shown you it. There's a, um, a link to a video below which you can see us using it. This one is in the same league, it's absolutely brilliant. This has got to be the Land Rover tool of the year 2000 and, well, for the next century. It is absolutely fantastic. I used this at work the other day, got myself out of trouble. Basically, it's just a matter of putting the collar around and then doing up the bar, which will push up the plate. Once you've got the plate up there, and of course I would suggest that you put the circlip over first before you put the tool on, it is literally just a matter of um, clicking it into place and you'll find the groove easy enough 
and what you see is the circlip is in place that is it that's what the tool does and it's a massive time saver no hassle with using maybe a bottle jack on the floor to lift up this plate okay so if you know who made this tool then let me know put a link below in the comments so other people can go out and buy it it is worth its weight in gold